Hello, Zero K fans. Welcome to Nano Lays at Dawn. This is Shadow Fury 333 with another exhibition match. This is going to be a three game series between Google Frog and Aquanim. And let's try out the new spectator displays, which are actually still kind of work in progress, but let's try them anyway. So, Google Frog has been very kindly making some spectator specific displays, stats displays, and all this. As you can see right now, it's a little bit rudimentary. It has winds, it has economy, it doesn't have like. The production is still its own widget right now, and it doesn't have the army value stuff which might be a bit of a problem in trying to gauge how powerful players are at any given time. But we'll see how that goes. Just try this out. Probably won't try it out for Clan Wars on Saturday, because there probably will be Clan Wars on Saturday, as there usually is. But let's try it here. Why not? See how it goes. I mean, it's basically the, it's the economy window that you get when you normally play in the game, just for both players. Or in the case of team games, it's both teams rather than individual players, because... The team economy is fully shared. Makes sense. Anyhow, let's get started. So it's going to be on Intersection, which is a map that's pretty pretty commonly played. It's a very interesting map. I always say that. It is, however, a map that does demand a lot of attention along the corners, which requires, that requires the players to actually move around a lot. And any good map is going to require that the players aren't just going straight down the center in one straight line, but actually caring about the sides. Both players going for the Shieldbot Factory, while Google Frog being a bit more aggressive with the dirt bags. Aquanim, on the other hand, is starting out with convicts. They just want to build up economy. Interesting though, Aquanim setting up their factory right in the back of the base. This is very unusual in this map. Google Frog, the way they're setting up is the most typical way to play. You set up your factory somewhere between the front two metal extractors. The front two based on north south, not east west. So it's between these two or between these two. Typically, that's where it's done. Aquanim, however, are going for an extremely defensive position, putting their factory right in the back. Defended, oddly, by wind generators. I do not understand this, because the wind generators are going to take the brunt of any initial raiding, and they can't do that. They really cannot. I mean, Aquanim probably did that because their commander was right there, and wind gens are cheaper. It's just from a defensive perspective, they're going to really rely on these bandits. They have no other way. Goofog already expanding over to the northeast. Aquanim, however, has not done anything over to the over to the southwest, or, for that matter, to the northeast. The corners are equidistant. There isn't really a favored one for either side. But Google Frog deciding, well, I'm going to go for the northeast. And Aquanim not challenging that. Not even close. So at this point, Google Frog is actually a little bit behind. If look at the economy right now. Aquanim, Aquanim taking their entire has taken their entire base. They have a bit more overdrive going. But overall, it is fairly even. Now, Hakunim does have... Let's think about this. I mean, Google Frog is going to be able to get an extra about 4.8 metal from this alone, like regardless of overdrive, just from this area, 1.8 extra metal. Hakunim, I don't know if they're aware of this. I don't think so. I don't see any reason why they would be. They've gone for a much more defensive, kind of clustered-in metal extractor setup. Which will give them a slight advantage. I mean, it's going to come up faster. Google Frog had to set up defenses beforehand. Aquanim, on the other hand, they've just gone for it just because they figure, well, it's close enough to my main base, I can defend it if I need to. Which means Aquanim does have the slight economic advantage right away. But whether or not this will translate, I mean, it'll come down to the next couple of fights. And unfortunately, Google Frog, or for Aquanim at least, Google Frog taking that first shot. But Aquanim may yet have a chance to get in here. Basically, Akram's going to have about half a minute to a minute window from this point where they, I think, might have a larger army. And even then, not by much. It'll be like one or two more bandits. It really will come down to the positioning. But Google Frog is getting back into the game. Their economy is its coming back basically up to par with Aquanim. So Aquanim, they just need to win a couple fights. If they can win a couple fights, that'll at least solidify the, the slight advantage they got from that early economy boost. But then now Google Frog having taken the same... Oh yeah, they're taking those metal extractors. At this point, Aquanim and Google Frog are about even. Interestingly, Aquanim not confident in their micro of those bandits over to the north. Which, the main concern is of course these bandits over here. Lotus will probably take care of one or two if it even comes up. No, it won't even come up. That Lotus is not going to be... No, that convict's going for it. It's not even going to... It's, it's going to risk it. It's not going to stop for anything. And that was probably wise, forcing Google Frog to get out of the way. But Google Frog still has the, no the northeast. The southwest is currently uncontested. Neither player has gone for it at all. Rather interesting. Aquanim, like, 
their opening play is reflected in the rest of their game plan being very defensive. They are checking out the Northwest. I don't think they have any reason to suspect that it actually has anything, though. Oh, they do! They actually do have enough radar coverage to see that Lotus. They do know what's going on. Nice use of dirt bags, by the way. That's another thing. Good use of dirt bags as Lotus bait. And of course, if the Lotus doesn't respect that, then it gets hit. And good sh Oh, very nice shielding by Google Frog there. Very cleverly done. Like, I mean, okay, that worker will die, but that just left that particular Lotus alive far longer than it had any right to be. Unfortunately for Akinem, Google Frog coming in for what could be a it could be the end of the game, really. I mean, get get rid of the defenders, get rid of a couple of bandits, rush in, tear apart the economy, because most of Akinem's economy is right here. As Google Frog loses their own economy to the northeast, and the southwest has not been taken either. Google Frog checking to see if Akinem has taken that, and Akinem retreating into their base, and that's actually working out quite well. Those bandits getting killed by the retreat micro. Not really destroying the economy in any meaningful way either. Getting rid of, like, I don't know, couple, like, plus two-ish power. Like, plus two, plus four energy, plus four metal. Not nothing, but all that's inside of Akinem's base. The biggest thing is that the reclaim is pretty easy to claim. Basically, Akinem's going to be very, very able to reclaim it. Now, unfortunately, Akinem does have a tendency to try to build caretakers to get reclaim with. Which means that it'll be a bit delayed. Like, that reclaim gathering will not happen anytime soon. I'm kind of surprised there's no convict coming up here. I mean, this convict... Okay, it probably should be just focusing on the factory. But there's none coming up so far. Akinem does not have any queued up. They have none... Like, they have no emergency queued... Nothing. Nothing's been queued up for that. It's just really weird. You'd expect a convict to be, like, just alt-clicked in. So it's the first thing that comes in. Reclaim the rest of this. And then come in with a much larger army, especially since they are switching to gunships, and gunships are fairly expensive individually. Not to mention the amount of power that they need to rebuild. I mean, yeah, sure, they didn't lose a huge amount of power, but, you know, it's not nothing, but... No, Akron throws in the towel, despite the fact that they had all that reclaim to work with, figuring they have no way out of this. I mean, okay, the rogues are intimidating, but there was no anti-air, there was some territory control, but at that point, the economy was even, or very nearly even. Like I said, a couple wind generators to make up for it to allow the reclaim to be used. Pull in the reclaim. Just push out a ton of units, especially from that factory over here. And from the gunship plant. Just push out a few rapiers. Like, there was nothing coming in to counter that. Google Frog did not read that. It would have been a very strong assault. Coming in with like half a dozen to a dozen rapiers and then just ripping everything apart. Would have really opened up Google Frog to allow Akinem to take the map. Or at least a large chunk of the map. Akinem already had the northeast. That was a really weird... I mean, I guess Akinem just lost all confidence. Well, it happens. I must say, it, it definitely happens. I can totally sympathize. But, that was not the only game they played. They actually played a couple more games. The next one is on Baron. That will be up in just a moment. Apparently, it is a jump up mirror, and apparently also quite exciting. So, let's get to that. Just in a couple minutes. Stay tuned. <laughs> 